God bless. God bless, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for all of you that are coming on to read with me um, the scripture, the Bible. Amen. I'm on chapter 3 of Genesis. Amen. If you want to get your Bibles and open up to Genesis 3 and read along with me. Amen. I'm using the King James uh, Version Bible. Amen. It is uh, 24 verses, friends. It is the temptation of Eve, um, this chapter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give the Lord um, a prayer. I'm going to pray first, and then we can get into this reading. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this chapter that that I have here to read with my brothers and sisters, Father. I pray that you just guide us through this reading, Lord. Give us understanding and open up our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So, I'm going to read this word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sued, sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day and Adam and his wife did hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him where art thou and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who told thee that thou was naked? Thou has eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not, shouldn't eat, should not eat. And the man said, the woman who thou gavest to, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. And above every beast of the field, upon the belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply the sorrow in thy conception, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, 
of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. From dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So now we're just going to review this chapter. Amen. Amen. So we see here. Um, <clears throat> now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So right there, he's quest it's questioning God, right? Questioning God's authority. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. We can eat from the fruit of the tree. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, which is in the middle of the garden, right? God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. So it was a command not to touch this tree in the midst of the garden. It was the command that he gave them. They could eat from all the trees except from this tree. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we see here that the serpent attacked God through his creation, through God's creation here. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> so he stated that what God had said to Adam was not true in verses 3 and 4, right? And Adam and Eve believed Satan. They, they, were te they believed him. Glory to God. As a result, Adam and Eve's sin, in the course of sin, in the consequence, did come upon God's creation because of, of, of them believing what Satan had said to them. Amen. Um... The human race was got was made in in hey, was made in God's image, amen. And the Satan interrupted that. Glory to God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So the serpent is identified as Satan here, obviously in this story, amen. And uh, it speaks of that in Revelations twelve nine. In 22, Satan evidently took control of the serpent and used it as an instrument in his work of temptation. Amen. So we see here that Satan can use, use whatever he wills to tempt us, to deceive us. He used the snake, the serpent in this, in this, in this story here. He can use people to tempt us, to deceive us, to lie to us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thinking of it spiritually. Amen. 
So the human race is bound to God by faith in his word as absolute truth. Amen. Firstly, because he knew that Satan sought to destroy the woman's faith in what God had said by raising doubts. Raising doubts about that, that word. Amen. Satan suggests that God did not really mean what he said. See how he questioned? Made them doubt in the Lord. Doubt in God's word. Hallelujah. <clears throat> in other words, you know, he proposed... Um, actually, he, he, he gave them a form of denying, amen, the judgment of death, um, for, for deliberate de transgression, amen. He convinced them, amen. Um, see, the devil will always lie, amen, because he wants to destroy, amen. He wants to destroy right from the beginning, amen. Glory to God. One of the basic sins of humankind is unbelief. Amen. Unbelief. Unbelief in God's word. <clears throat> it is believing that somehow God does not really mean what he says about salvation and righteousness. Uh, sin, judgment, death. Um... His, his most uh, persistent lie is that the is that the deliberate sin of rebellion against God will not necessarily bring separation from God in eternal condemnation but we see these things in like first Corinthians 6 9 Galatians 5 21 amen amen but also when we see here in verse 5 it says ye shall be as gods see from saint from the beginning um, of the human race, um, he tempted humans to believe that they they can be like God, amen, and decide for themselves what is good and what is evil. See, humanity is seeking to be gods, become independent from you're independent from God Almighty, amen, <clears throat> and in such become false gods. And we see these in like, you know, in verse 22, um, John 10, 34, humans now seek gain moral knowledge and make ethical judgments by the process of, of human reason, human reason, not spiritual, human reason. God's moral absolutes given in biblical revelation. Nevertheless, God alone has the wisdom and the power to determine what is good and evil. Amen. Scripture declares that all who seek to be gods shall perish from the earth and from under these heaven, under these heavens. Hallelujah. This will also be the fate of the Antichrist who will claim that he is God. And we read that in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. Amen. And we see here in verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to her eyes, the desire, right? And the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She's like, oh, this is going to make me smart like God. This is going to make me wise. And she desired it. She took of the fruit thereof. And did eat. So once she touched it, she had already sinned. She had already made a conscious choice that she was going to sin once she touched it, right? And gave it also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So not did she not did she not only um, break the commandment of God, but she also gave it to her husband. And you know he is is the head. He should have um, said something. <laughs> Amen. But it doesn't say, it just says that she gave it to her husband and he did eat. So he didn't say, no, Eve, this is wrong. God commanded us not to eat from this. He just listened to his wife and ate of the apple as well and also sinned against God's command. Amen. So they both sinned. 
morally and spiritual death came immediately right so we see here moral and spiritual death came immediately while physical death came later amen god has said in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die spiritually immoral death occurs at once when they sinned that's when it happened right when they sinned moral death is consisted in the death of god's life in them and their nature becoming sinful spiritual death meant that their their former relationship to god in innocence was destroyed resulting in the state of sinfulness since the sin of adam and eve every person born comes into this world with a sinful nature you know after the flesh in or after the flesh carnally minded that's why we're born with sin and we're carnal minded fleshy um we see in romans 8 5 through 8 amen this corruption of human nature involves the um the desire to go our own selfish way without concern for God or others and it is passed on to all human beings so it's passed on amen it's the nature it's our nature because of this because of the sin however that nowhere does scripture teach that all sinned when Adam sinned of that his guilt was imputed to the whole human race but the Bible does teach that Adam introduced the law of sin and death to all humanity amen hallelujah in verse 7 it says they knew that they were naked so when adam and eve lived in moral innocence um before the fall right there was no sense of wrong or shame amen there was no shame there was no sense of wrong to be naked right however after they sinned the awareness of nakedness became associated with sin in the fallen depraved condition of humankind because of the evil the nakedness would cause in the world god himself made garments and clothed adam and eve hallelujah and now he commands all people to dress modestly hallelujah you see how satan works he gave them a, a little bit of truth with deception. Your eyes will be open because now their eyes are open and they realize that they are naked and they felt shame. Amen. They felt shame. They hid themselves. The guilt of their consciousness of sin caused Adam and Eve to shun God and they felt afraid and uncomfortable in his presence, knowing that they were sinful and under dis displeasure amen in the condition that they found impossible to draw near draw near to him right hallelujah with confidence in our sinful condition we too are like adam and eve right god has provided us a way to cleanse our guilty conscience free us from our sin and restore right us to his fellowship the way is called Jesus Christ, right? That's what he, he he's given us, Jesus Christ. We see that in John 14, 6. Through the redemption of God provided in his son, instead of running from God to high, we can draw near to him in order to receive love, mercy, grace, and help, help in a time of need. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. And we see in, in verse 13, it says, the, the serpent beguiled me, it says. So Satan caused the downfall of the human race through the deception. Hallelujah. This is one of the chief methods for, for leading people away from God. Amen. God's way of truth. The Bible teaches that Satan deceives the blind and, and blinds the mind of the unbelieving of the world in order that they may not understand the gospel he'll blind your mind amen according to paul it is through satan's deception 
that some within the church will believe that they can live a sinful lifestyle and inherit the kingdom of God. Deception will be Satan's chief means to lead many into rebellion against God. Hallelujah. At history's end. Hallelujah. All Christians must be prepared for the comp for the committed to a a con um continuous life and death struggle against deception of Satan. We're constantly going to be fighting. Amen. As it is relates to their their our personal lives, our marriages, our families, schools, churches, and work. Amen. It's always he's always going to try to deceive us in any way or form. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when it says, It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So this verse contains the first, um, it's the promise of God's plan of redemption here for the, for the world. It predicts the ultimate victory for humankind in God over Satan and evil by prophesying of the spiritual conflict between the seed of the woman, right? The Lord Jesus Christ. In the seed of the serpent. Satan and his followers. Amen. God promised here that Jesus would be born of a woman. Amen. And 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 would be bruised through his crucifixion. Yet he would live from the dead incompletely. To completely destroy Satan's sin and death for the sake of salvation of the human race. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. So we see here in 16, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. The punishment placed upon men, man and woman, right? In verses 16 through 19, as well as the elect of sin upon nature. Hallelujah. We're meant to remind humankind of the terrible consequences of sin. There's always consequences to our sins, right? And cause them... To depend on God in faith and obedience. Amen. God intended the present condition of the human race on earth to be redemptive. Eve's attempt to liberate herself from God and act independently from her husband would be uh, a strong desire for her husband, right? A deep attraction towards Adam and his headship over her would bring trouble and suffering along with the joy and blessing. Hallelujah. It's the consequence. Amen. Because of God's curse upon nature, Adam and Eve would experience physical hardships, toil, struggle, and eventually death themselves and all of their offspring, their family children. Amen. In verse 20, called his wife's name Eve. Adam called his wife's name Eve, and it means life, right? Because she was the first mother of humanity in of all generations, right? To know God, to know good and evil, right? In verse twenty-two, Adam and Eve, glory to God, had attempted to set themselves up at God's equal and to determine their own standards. Amen. Glory to God. But through their fall, human beings became some extent independent of God and began to distinguish for themselves between good and evil. So firstly, in the world, imperfect and perverted human judgment, hallelujah, often decides what is good and evil. This was never God's will. It was never God's will. For he intended us to know only good in dependence on him and his word. He wants us to depend on him, not our own self. Secondly, all who confess Christ as Lord return to God's original purpose for humankind. They rely on God's word to determine what is good. And that's what we need to do. We need to rely on God's word, what is good, what he speaks in our life. Amen. In verse 24, it says, he drove out the man. So Adam's perfect relationship to God had been lost here. Right? That's why it's the fallen. He was now driven out of the garden in the life of dependence on God in the midst of trials began. In addition, Satan is some sense gained power over the world. That's why they say he is, um, you know, the world belongs to Satan. He gained some power here. Hallelujah. Because of this. 
Amen. Through the fall of Adam and Eve from the New Testament speak of Satan as being the prince of the world. There you go. The prince of the world. Amen. However, God so loved that human race that he determined to conquer Satan, right? By con by um concealing them in the world to himself at the cost of the life of his son. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful chapter, guys. Glory to God. I'm going to give the Lord thanks. That is all I have. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. May you bless the ears listening. May you open up our minds, hallelujah, to receive your word. We thank you for this wisdom, Lord, that you've placed within us to understand. And may you continue to guide us each and every day in our readings. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Shalom, shalom. If you like this video, hit the like button, guys, and share the gospel. Shalom, shalom.